Hey guys, so I'm finished with my battery powered induction heater and what I wanted to show you is that not only can I run it on battery, but I can also hook it up to a regular power supply. So it's kind of like a, uh, you know, portable induction heater, but you can also use it as a standalone to, uh, you know, prevent wasting batteries. So you can use it in your, you know, your shop or anywhere you want, really. So what I have here is a Variac hooked up to an unregulated power supply that outputs uh, more than a thousand watts. And I got a little amp meter there. I have a uh, multimeter and then we can see that we got the coil and we have a wand attachment. So that'll allow me to, you know, change the attachments, put, you know, different types of coils on here and so these are the batteries i just have them velcroed on and i made a little connector that adapts this to a regular power supply so and then you can see right now this is actually on we're at 50 volts dc and this is just really simple we got a high power uh, rectifier here and we have our big caps storing all the power and that those inductors there are basically just for uh, minor filtering and they prevent the, they do limit the inrush current for the caps there. So, and so let's go ahead and take this knife that you saw. So 18 amps with this, with this knife here. You can hear the hum from the transformer, but you can see this heats up very, very quickly. So I wish I had some stuff to cut through as that seems to be uh, popular on YouTube these days, but I'm not gonna do that. So this is just steel bar stock. draws less than the knife did. Yeah, so that's pretty hot. Okay, so let's go ahead and give the graphite crucible another try. So we're gonna kick it on. So we've got seven amps, and it's very important that you start this unit without anything in the coil because you can cause the coil to cross conduct the MOSFETs and then you're in big trouble. So this is running at about 730 watts from the wall right now and 18 amps to the ZVS driver. There's my fire blanket catching on fire. I really need a fire brick, but I'll get one of those soon. But it looks pretty cool. 19.3 amps, still steady. That is, I can feel that heat from pretty far away. Let's go ahead and cut that off. Still at 19.3 the whole time, so. Now I've gone ahead and disconnected the power supply and we're gonna see how the battery powered version does with these little kitchen shears. So let's go ahead and turn it on.
yeah so it's a pretty cool little unit now I wouldn't use this all the time for like if you know if you're a knife shop and you're making a lot of knives I wouldn't use this to you know use this as your forge for you know heating up your your knives or, or you know heat treating your knives but for just you know to have in the shops for heating little pieces of material up and a nice little touch to take it to go I think it's a pretty cool little device so I'm going to show you how I made it so let's go ahead and take this apart and so you just plugs in here and when you're hooking it up to the unregulated power supply you need to make sure that you have the order right when you're hooking up to the battery it doesn't matter but the order of these does but when you're hooking it up to this uh, adapter here so you want to go ahead and put the positive to the positive the unmarked one directly in the center and then the negative and the negative and this inside these are all tied in series so you want to make sure that you have these labeled when you make it so to make these clips here for the coil attachment I used a binder clip for each of these and you can just kind of get in there and bend it a bit and you just remove these drill a hole and then make nice little clips so let's get this out of the way okay so in here you see that to have a basic switch here just for turning the unit on and off be nice to add a little LED you can see from the top because right now you don't really know what's going on so but I just have that ZVS driver and after all of that you know this stuff's a little warm but it's not too bad and if you wanted to really make this a bit more robust since these enclosures are designed to be waterproof oilproof you could fill this up with mineral oil or silicone oil and then that would really help with the the cooling here because that's another reason why you wouldn't really want to use this all day and it's more of a I need to heat stuff up every once in a while is because there's no airflow in here this is completely sealed so if uh, you really wanted a more robust setup you would use a bigger enclosure but I wanted a nice little compact enclosure here and what I've done is I just placed the ZVS driver on standoffs and I've pressed I used threaded brass inserts and I pressed those into little blocks of plastic and I've glued that plastic down to the bottom of this so you have nice little standoffs you can remove here so but other than that it's pretty straightforward it's not really a whole lot to it these are called cable glands, and you just drill a hole, tighten them down, and uh, yeah. You know, I see people blowing these up all the time, and the problem is, this is a self-oscillating circuit, meaning that the frequency is going to adjust depending on what you put in the coil, and to get it started, it needs to have nothing in the coil, and once it starts oscillating on its own, when you place stuff in, it's not really that big of a deal. Another problem is cheap power supplies, uh, switching power supplies, really cheap ones, they don't reach their rated voltage fast enough and that causes both of these MOSFETs to lock up. When that happens, you basically have a dead short and these just overheat and catch on fire. So you don't want that to happen. So what you can do to avoid that is have two switches. You have one switch to turn on your power supply and it it basically allows the power supply to get up to voltage and then when you're ready to turn this on you just you turn the power on and you're already at voltage the good thing about using batteries is you only need one switch because they're already sitting there at the voltage you need so these units need uh they they do they will operate on 12 volts but again 
if you have a slow power supply at 12 volts, uh, it's even more likely to conduct uh, both of these MOSFETs. So it's a good idea to use at least 24 volts. Here I was using uh, 50 both with the batteries and the unregulated power supply I made. And you don't have to have the super expensive one that I used in my other videos. I just it's just a very reliable power supply with a lot of features that will protect this circuit as well as the power supply. So expensive power supplies are really, really worth it because at the end of the day, you don't ruin what you're attaching to it and the power supply also is protecting itself. So at the end of the day, it will actually save you a lot more money if you go ahead and buy a nice power supply. Now, if it's just for, you know, if you're okay with just buying power supply and, and experimenting and that's, you know, that's up to you. But you could see here that you don't even need the expensive power supply as long as you know what you're doing. But that's where the expensive power supply comes into play. It really helps you if you don't know what you're doing and you're just, you know, experimenting, oh, let me hook this up. But once you do know what you're doing, you go ahead and use whatever you want. But like the, in the case of this, you really need two switches for uh, you know, a cheaper power supply. Even this unregulated power supply, I have two switches. I have the switch for the Variac and then the switch for this. Okay, so that's it guys. I hope you liked the video. If you did like the video, please go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing for more content like this. See you guys later.